I recently did a video on the ifs function and a few people suggested that I should have also offered switch, which was new in Excel 2019, as an alternative to ifs. So in this video, we're going to take a look at the switch function and see how it stacks up against some other functions like vlookup, ifs, and choose. Now the first argument in switch is the expression. And if you're not familiar with the term expression, you can think of it here as the value that you want to switch. In this case, it can be a cell reference, a value, a formula, Boolean values, pretty much anything that evaluates to a single value. Now a common use for switch is as a type of lookup. For example, let's say I want to enter the state for these cities. I can select the city cell as my expression, and then I just enter pairs of city and state results for each of the cities that I have in my list. I'll use Alt and Enter to go down onto the next line because this formula will be quite long. And lastly, I can enter a value if the city isn't found. Close parentheses, press Enter. It gets copied down because my formula is in an Excel table. You can see my formula there with the pairs of cities and states. So it's fairly straightforward to use. Now, if we compare switch to ifs, the formula is slightly longer because we have to perform a logical test for each state. So for example, I need to check if this cell equals Sydney, then the result if true is NSW for New South Wales, and then just repeat for the remaining cities. Again, if this cell equals Melbourne, then it's Victoria and so on. And then in the case of ifs, for my default value, if the city isn't found, I enter true here, and then the value that I want returned if the city isn't present in the list. And there's my formula. I can make it look a bit prettier by entering carriage returns after each city and state combination. So you can see in this case, it's a bit easier to use switch. However, I personally prefer to use VLOOKUP or XLOOKUP for this type of task because if I have any changes or additions, it's much quicker and easier to change them in one place. Let's take a look. For this, I need a table that contains the list of cities and their states. I can then write a VLOOKUP or an XLOOKUP. We'll start with VLOOKUP. So I'm going to look up the city in this table here, return the state, which is in the second column, and I want an exact match, which is zero or false. Close my parentheses, press enter, and there's my formula, dead easy. Likewise, X look up, we look up the city in the city column and return the state, and we're done. The nice thing about this approach is it doesn't matter where I use this formula, if I update this table, either changing things, which obviously not going to do in this case, but I could add another record, then this formula is automatically going to pick it up because it's referencing this table. Whereas with the switch function, I've hard keyed those city and state combinations. And if I make any changes, I have to change it in every cell that I've used that formula in, and that can be prone to error. Let's look at another example. Now it's not obvious at first that you can use switch for multiple logical tests like you can with ifs. In the previous example, the switch function had to find an exact match. So here we're going to look at how we can kind of trick switch into finding an approximate match. I'll use the example I covered in my ifs video where I want to classify these loan items with a status where loan items greater than 90 days old are overdue, items equal to 90 days old are due, and items less than 90 days old are not due. So with ifs, we have to perform pairs of logical tests and then the values we want returned. So the first logical test is, is today's date minus the loan date greater than 90 days? If it is, it's overdue. And then we do the next logical test again. If today's date minus the loan date equals 90 days, then it's due. And that means everything else must be not due. So the last logical test is simply true and the value is not due. Close parentheses and there's my ifs formula. Now to write the equivalent with switch, we enter true in the expression. And what this does is tell switch to look for the value that returns true. 
So in each value argument, we can put in our logical test. So the first one is, is today's date minus the loan date greater than 90 days? If it is, return overdue. And then the next logical test is again today minus the loan date. If it's equal to 90, then it's due. And lastly, because switch can return a default value in the last argument, we just enter not due. Close parentheses on switch. And there's our equivalent switch formula. Now, while switch can perform the same calculation as ifs, personally, I think ifs is more intuitive and therefore easier to use. I mean, how many people are going to know that they need to enter true here in order to have multiple logical tests in their formula? Not many. Let's look at one last example. We can use switch to classify dates into fiscal quarters. For example, our financial year in Australia runs from July to June. Therefore, July, August and September are in quarter one and so on from there. So we can use switch to find the month number from this date. And then we can give it pairs of values and results. If the month number is one, then it's the third quarter. If it's two, it's also the third quarter. If it's three, it's the third quarter. If it's four, it's the fourth quarter and so on until we enter all the values for the whole year. Close parentheses on switch and there's my classification of my dates into their fiscal quarters and you can see the formula here. But then choose can also do this and I think it's much simpler. Let's have a look. So choose, again we use month to return the month number for the date and then all we need to do is enter the corresponding values in order. So I need to enter the quarter number in line with their month number. So the first one is January and that's quarter three. February is also quarter three as is March. The next three are quarter four. Then we go to quarter one and quarter two. And that's all we have to do. So you can see choose is much more succinct. Now in this tutorial, we've looked at how we can use switch to perform lookup type tasks, which is handy if you don't want to store lookup values in another table, but there are risks and more maintenance required with these type of formulas. And that's why I prefer VLOOKUP or XLOOKUP. Then we looked at using switch with multiple logical tests, but really it's not as straightforward as using ifs for the same task. And lastly, we looked at using switch to classify dates into fiscal periods, but choose can do this more succinctly. Well, the bottom line is that while switch is handy, it doesn't give us any functionality we don't already have in Excel or give us any efficiency improvements. However, because it's a function that's available in other programming languages, it's nice to have it in Excel for those already familiar with it. Well, I hope you found this video helpful. You can download the file for this lesson from the link here. And if you like this video, please give it a thumbs up and subscribe to our channel for more. And why not share it with your friends who might also find it useful? Thanks for watching.